about the first practice of the year, but we'll just open it up for questions here with Coach Wilcox today. Uh, Jeff Frado, would you like to start? Sure. Justin, how you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm okay. Still got Kyle's face up here. Go go ahead. Okay. Uh, Justin, can you just tell us, first of all, um, when you guys finally got the complete 100% okay to, to go forward with your practice today, you know, what the process was like, and then just if you could take us through what what the atmosphere was like today, and yeah. how excited I'm sure everybody was to uh, to have a football practice finally. Yeah, it was uh, <clears throat> kind of late in the day yesterday, um, and talking to our, our doctors and uh, uh, our athletic department, uh, Jim Knowlton, you know uh, that we had got clearance to to move forward uh, after we got our our individual testing daily testing in place. So got that yesterday, and then uh, we had every everything kind of set up and, and had planned for that. Uh, and then today we, we had our, our first uh, go at it and we had uh, kind of a process of players come in, they, they do their testing, which they've been doing all week. And then we had uh, some outdoor uh, kind of meeting space. And, and we, then we were able to, to get down on the field in our first group of 75 and have a practice. And then, uh, you know, brought in the, the second group, which is about uh, 35 or so. Uh, and did a, a practice with them. So uh, broken up practices, but uh, I think it went really well. Uh, there was uh, just incredible excitement to be back out there. Uh, players, coaches, everybody uh, just back on the field. And, you know, there's some things that are a little bit different with, uh, you know, you don't have quite the numbers of staff. So, so some of that's a little bit different how we, you know, do hydration and water and all that and uh, some of the periods and uh, it was just, it was great. I mean, it was um, the most fun a lot of us have had in a long, long time, I think. Jeff, any follow-ups? Uh, yeah, could you go through a little bit further, uh, Justin, with with the 75-player limit, or 75-person limit, I guess, uh, how you'll manage that during the year in terms of, will you break it, you can't break it up offense and defense, really, I wouldn't imagine. How, how do you do that exactly? Yeah, so there's 75 players, and uh, – we can, we can move players kind of in and out. It's just a limit of number of players that you can have on the field for the given practice. And so uh, we're able to have kind of a, a two groups, you know, uh, two groups of offense, two groups of defense. We have some special teams that we, we can get going. You don't have the depth. And so the practice is a little bit shorter because as opposed to going ones, twos, and threes, when you're doing a, a, a individual drill or one-on-ones or a, a team situation, you, you really only have two groups. So you, you cut down the practice reps that way, even though they're getting the same amount, the practice is shorter. Uh, and then with the second group, it's kind of one group. And uh, so we thought, uh, you know, there's a few different ways we could have done this. We felt, felt like this was the best um, for our team. And as I mentioned, there, there will be days when, you know, some from that second practice will go into the first and, and vice versa. So uh, that's flexible moving forward. Okay, we'll uh, move on to Jasper Sundin from the Daily Cal. Hi, Coach. Um, quick, quick question. Uh, you have 75 people on the field. Are there any restrictions as to like social distancing restrictions when this 75 kid cohort is out there? Um, and anything of that nature? Yeah, so you can't have uh, like contact periods. So for you couldn't do a team period for more than uh, uh, 12 minutes. Uh, so we keep our team periods shorter and, um, you know, when we do individual, if it's a drill that can be done, you know, with social distancing, then we'll, we'll do that. Um, there are protocols for, you know, the guys wearing masks, if they're, you know, active and exerting, um, they can have them down. But once they're off, if we're doing walkthroughs that everybody's masked back up. Uh, so there's, yeah, there's definitely kind of rules and regs and we, we got those before today. And so we had planned our practice out and uh, built all those in. And so we could still get the work done that we felt like was necessary. Okay, Jasper, any follow-ups? Um, is that, is, are those restrictions gonna change as you sort of get closer to the season? And uh, if not, how, how do you anticipate that affecting you guys getting ready to, to play that first game in November? Oh, I, Jasper, I thought you'd know the answer to that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's a, that's a great question. And, uh, we don't, we don't, uh, 
you know, we don't set the protocols. They're given to us and, and we're expected to follow them. So they give us the information. We structure the practice uh, uh, in a way that complies with, with the, uh, the uh, protocols. And then if they change, we'll adjust. And, uh, you know, that's going to be part of this season. There's going to be adjustments along the way, um, you know, throughout the season. And uh, even could be tomorrow. I don't know. So we're going to have to keep our knees bent. And we talked about that as a team. And that's part of the challenge. And, uh, you know, we're going to look at it in a positive way, what we can do, as opposed to it, it, it's really easy to start talking about what you can't do. I think all of us could find out, find a lot of things uh, that we can't do right now, but we're able to practice. We're able to use, you know, practice with 75 people. We can get blocks of 10 minutes to do some teamwork. So we're going to find a way uh, to get that work done. Okay, uh, we'll move on to Rusty Simmons. Yeah, that that leads into uh, to my question. I I, I just wonder. Uh, two two months ago, it seemed like this was impossible, um, and and now you guys are practicing. What does that feel like? Uh, well, I think maybe summed up best and in, in running out there. We had just got into our first. Uh, we did a little seven on seven, and Nico uh, turned around, up came up, and said this is the most normal I've felt all year. And I yeah. said, me too. And I, you know, I just, that's what it felt like. You know, we were able, we were able to be out there uh, coaching and practicing, playing football. And I think it was uh, real, uh, you know, kind of energetic and uh, everybody had a smile on their face and there's just so much that's gone on and to get, get to have the chance to go back out and play. It was, uh, it was a special day. Rusty follow-ups. Yeah, I, I relate to uh, keeping your knees bent, staying in the athletic position. Um, how, how do you feel your guys have done with that? Are, are, are they adjusting to this well? Yeah, uh, they've done a great job. I mean, considering all the changes and uh, the lifestyle changes that you've all made and they're making and, uh, you know, a, a month or so ago or whenever it was that they said, hey, we're, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to play until January. And then there was a a change in that, just the, the agility they've shown to kind of roll with it and stay positive and, and keep at it has been really impressive. Uh, and we're going to need to continue to do that. Um, so, uh, you know, certainly there's times where it, it can be frustrating to people and, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sure they were as we all were at, at times, but really they did a, a great job of, uh, you know, being agile and, and doing what they could do and, and, uh, I'm just, I'm proud of them for that. And so it's not quite the same, you know, we haven't had a normal off season. So we're being cognizant of that in, in terms of how we're preparing them, but they've done a really good job uh, adjusting along the way. Okay. Uh, we'll move on for now to Trace Travers from Rivals. Yeah. Um, one thing you mentioned on Wednesday was that you kind of have to have the normal NCAA um, like uh, ramp up to contact. And so that would put you guys in helmets today. How much kind of installation were you able to do considering quite you guys been doing it over Zoom this yeah, whole time? Yeah, no, quite a bit. Um, and one of the things in the last uh, couple of weeks that we've been able to do is go out on the field in smaller groups and walk and talk. And we had done a, a ton of meeting as we, I think we talked Wednesday over Zoom. So the, uh, the language of the installation a lot of it has has been done, you know, more than once. It's the the application execution part, and so it wasn't like the first time they've heard a play or a defense. Uh, but to go out there and run, you know, do it full speed and uh, uh, you know identify the offense or identify the defense and the adjustments that have to be made during a play, uh, the physical part of it. You know, this was the first day, but I thought they did a great job, and you could tell that they put a lot of work in and at coaches, players, we, we've all put a lot of work into getting to this point. And I thought it was uh, real productive uh, considering the first day we were out there. Grace, any uh, follow-ups? Yeah. Uh, as far as kind of conditioning of the team, how do you, where do you feel that they're at at this point? Yeah, I would, we're not there yet. I mean, uh, just again, the unique nature of this, the last couple months, uh, we're not, we're not there yet, um, and our job is to, to get them ready to play uh, November 7th. So, 
again, how we get there, they, they're working and uh, they're, they're doing what we're asking them to do. And we're going to, uh, you know, be thoughtful, like what we ask them to do, strength and conditioning, what we're asking them to do in practice, what type of running, how much we're running, all that. And we're, our goal is to, to build it uh, throughout the next month so we can hit our stride in, in November. Okay, we'll move on to uh, Jim McGill from uh, Bear Insider. Hey, Justin. Um, that logistical question as a follow up. Are you able to do uh, essentially a second practice at the adjacent field while the main practice is going on, kind of like you do with special teams, or do you reserve the rest of the guys strictly for in the stadium with all the coaches there? We, uh, we start the first practice and then, oh, about 20 to, 30, 20 to 30 minutes before the first practice is over, the second practice begins. They get warmed up, they stretch, they do some special teams work. So Coach Regal, uh, some of us may go over. And then as the first practice ends, you know, we, we have uh, kind of a team period that finishes and that group grabs their stuff, talks to the, uh, we, t we address the team and then that first group and then they head out and then here comes the second group. Um, but we want to make sure the level of instruction for everybody is as good as it can be. So uh, obviously the, the coaches can't be two places at one time. So we do some special teams work and then they transition to Memorial and then we, we uh, finish off the remainder of practice in Memorial with that second group. So out of necessity, you're out there with the, the players a decent amount longer than typically. So time management is an even more premium during this period, I would imagine. Are, yeah. What do you mean? Do, you mean the well, I mean, just your just the, the amount of time you're out on the field if you're having to manage that group um, in the stadium. Yeah, but but again, if the the numbers um, are smaller, so the reps, you know. It, you still get the same amount of reps in a shorter amount of time. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, the coaches and support staff, strength and conditioning, we're out there a little bit longer, um, but the players at the end are getting nearly the same amount of reps they would if everybody was together. Uh, we just, yeah. yeah, have to break it up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, it's different, but that's, again, the, uh, those are the parameters that we're, we're working with and we're, we're excited to be back out there. And if that's what they are, then, so be it, you know, we're going to figure out a way to do it. With some other programs being able to get back on the field earlier than yours, do you have any sense for if there's any competitive disadvantage there? Don't even think about it. Don't discuss it because we have zero control over it. So yeah. um, uh, I know that there was other programs that could do more earlier, but again, that's uh kind of wasted time and energy for us. We're not, we're not concerned with that. We're just, we're, uh, we're glad to be back on the field and looking forward to getting our team ready to play uh, November 7th. Last question. The obviously not being in football specific activity is more in just strength and conditioning. You can't be in the same kind of shape that you would be otherwise, but what's your sense of where they are strength wise and weight wise? Um, I think they did a good job considering the circumstances. It was not a traditional off season. It wasn't a normal summer um, that we've had in the past. So they aren't maybe where they would be in a traditional sense, but we feel good about the time we have to prepare them and how we're gonna do that and breaking it up between strength and conditioning, uh, preparing for football. And uh, so we've put a lot of thought into that. I mean, we've been talking about that for the last month. And so they're, uh, that's the situation we're in and we feel good about our plan for the next month in, in both phases. Okay, um, we'll move on to Max Frankie from Barry Insider. Max, do you have any questions? Um, no, I'm with Jim, so. Okay, uh, Jackson Moore from Bear Territory. Coach, uh, aside from the significant changes you've had to make, uh, just how would you compare this day one to day ones of the past? <laughs> you could probably go back in our day one uh, 
video library, it's about the same, you know, a lot of excitement, uh, eager play, eager coaching, uh, plenty of mistakes, but all in all, that they had a just great attitude out there and everybody was uh, really glad to be on the field. And uh, so we'll have plenty to correct. We got some uh, video time, some meeting time tomorrow. And coaches were watching, watching some video tonight and make our cut ups and, you know, work on what needs to be worked on tomorrow. Ben Jackson, any follow ups? No, thank you. Okay, Phil Robinson, I think we'll wrap up our first round and then we'll see if anybody else has any uh, parting things. But, Phil, questions for Coach? Hey, Coach, good to see you. So, yeah, well. through this delayed process, how has it helped the team, if at all? I mean, what did we talk about the negatives and all of the uh, adversity that we've had to overcome throughout this? Has it brought the team closer together? Has there been any positive effects from this? I think probably all of us, as soon as we stepped out there today, had an even greater appreciation for what we get to do. You know, sometimes it takes not having something and uh, being able to go back on the field and coach the players and the players get to go out and work on their craft and be around each other. I mean, that's, that's a big part of this. So I think the, uh, the appreciation for what we get to do was evident when we were able to run out there today. Okay. Any follow-ups, Phil? No. Okay, guys, what we'll do uh, in trying to uh, be efficient with coaches' time, if you do have a second question, please just send me a quick chat message. And if you do have a, a, a final question, I'll call on you for a final time. If you don't, then, uh, then we'll just uh, be done. But uh, I know a few of you will, so... Uh, we'll wrap this final round up with a question from Jasper. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, I'm sorry I have a couple, but I'll try to keep them short. Um, you guys, it sounds like, have put a lot of thought in this, a lot of planning. Was there anything that still surprised you today? Um, no. Uh, I think the one thing we've come to expect is things aren't going to go according to plan. And the adjustments – they're going to have to be made along the way, whether it's tomorrow, next week, in two weeks, there's going to be adjustments we have to make and we have to approach those with the right attitude and understand that going in that it's probably not going to go according to plan. Um, but we got the right type of guys and right type of people in our program uh, to, to do that. So. Um. And then real, real quick, can you talk at all about the testing, what that process is like? Um, like, what, I, I don't know if you're able to, but when players get to the stadium, when do they get tested? How long does it take? That type of thing. Yeah, it's really well put together. Again, our, our medical staff and administration spent a lot of time on this. And there's a uh, protocol. Once they get to the stadium, they check in. They have a process there. And then they go through a, a line, a testing line that they'll, they'll go daily. Uh, and they have a assigned time and they can test five, uh, uh, five people at once and 15 people in a block. So we, they have an assigned time, just like you do a, a position meeting, for example, and that's their testing time. And then uh, our, uh, our medical staff has done a great job. So they are able to turn them around really pretty quickly. So, you know, we get 110 people or more than that, I should say. There's, I guess, 120 tests. Uh, every day and they get those turned around so they're able to screen before we even get to the practice field. Okay, Jasper, you good? Yeah, thanks. Okay, final question from Jeff Frado. Yeah, Justin, just to follow up on that, I had a couple of things, but real quick on that, if you if anybody tests negative on the rapid response test, what happens? Test negative? Oh, I'm sorry, if test positive, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, they have a process of alerting uh, the, uh, the person, and then there's a, a protocol they follow uh, with a positive test. Uh, part of that's confirming, you know, removing, con confirming the test, and they have a, another, they kind of enter into a different protocol. So um, our, again, our doctors are absolutely, they're in charge of that. You know, we follow directions, the coaches and players, we follow directions uh, when it comes to the testing protocol and, they're, uh, 
they're working with Ber with Berkeley Public Health because they're they're involved as well. So uh, there's a lot of folks that have, you know that are involved in, in this process. So we're the ones following the directions, but they have all that laid out for us. I trust no positives today. Yeah, I, that's something I won't be able to talk about. I think we're gonna you know I'll leave that to the administration how we're gonna announce it. Um, but yeah, everything went really well today. Everything went really well. So. And if I could follow up real quick with, uh, you guys uh, brought in a guy on your roster the other day that I don't think most of us knew about, uh, Ashton Stedrick, who had yeah. some uh, sort of uh, cartoon-like uh, statistics in high school. Um, I think he had a 500 yard game and 3000 yards this year. What can you tell us about him? Is he, I take it he's a scholarship player and what's, what do you expect out of him? He's, he's actually walked onto the program. He's very talented. He had opportunities to go on scholarship other places. And um, we, uh, you know, as you, as you all know, we take our walk-on program extremely seriously. We've had a lot of success with people walking on and earning scholarships. And when we, uh, we you know, recruit a walk-on, it's in our mind, we want, we, we think in our mind, that person will have an opportunity to earn a scholarship, that caliber of person and player and uh, he's one of those guys, very talented um, and had opportunities to go other places. And he's a very, very good student and done a really good job thus far. Now it's one practice, uh, but this off season, just kind of following through and, and learning the offense, he's done a nice job. So we'll see where that goes. Thanks. Hey, Jeff, you good? Yep, good, thanks. Okay, Rusty Simmons, final question. Yeah, Coach, I was just going to ask about uh, Elijah Hicks, and uh, I've been reading about him during this offseason and wondering your thoughts about uh, kind of how he's using his platform and what you think about what he's been doing. Uh, I mean, we've just been spoiled with guys, you know, the last few years, and he's another one. I mean, Elijah, what he's done, you know, off the football field, the type of person he is, it's just kind of an awe, uh, guys, you know, that we've been able to be around, um, you know, what he's done, uh, here on campus in the community, really on his own. Uh, he's just a, uh, he's a special guy. I mean, I think I, you know, we talked the other day about Cam Bynum and it's true. And, and Elijah, you know, they're different, different people, but a lot of common traits and just, uh, make you really proud to be around guys like that. And he's going to be very, very successful in, in whatever he does, football and beyond football. And he's going to impact a lot of folks. And, uh, at, you know, Elijah is a very, very competitive person. He's got an unbelievable heart. Uh, he's an extremely intelligent guy uh, and, um, you know, very motivated. So uh, it doesn't surprise me what, you know, after, after being around him this amount of time, what he's doing and how many people he's impacting. But, you know, each time you read about it or you hear something, you just you know, makes you really, really proud to be affiliated with him. It, it seems almost silly to ask about football uh, after I talk about Elijah as a person, but uh, is, is he a safety now? Is he, uh, is, yeah. is, we've kind of gotten used to watching Jalen and Ashton back there for, for a while. Is that what he's doing now? Yep. Uh, we, we, uh, at the, during the bowl prep and in, and the bowl game, you know, we worked Elijah some there. We had talked about it with him uh, during kind of that uh, after the regular season last year. And some of his traits uh, we think uh, are going to fit really well there. He really is a physical guy. Like he loves, you know, the, the physical part of the game. And uh, I think it's going to be a really good spot for him. And uh, so he's playing there full time now. He could go out and play corner. I mean, he's done it plenty for us, but I think uh, for both the team and for him, it's going to be a really positive move. Rusty, you good? You got anything else? That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Max, Frankie, I think would like to ask a question. Hey coach. Um, do you expect any of the opt outs uh, to return in the future? Uh, we had some questions from our subscribers at Bear Insider about that. Um, and also specifically DJ Rogers, if he uh, will ever return, so. Yeah, so the guys that have opted out, um, we haven't got that far yet. Uh, there will be conversations down the road, uh, but that'll be determined at a later time. And uh, DJ uh, asked for his 
uh, release and was given his release from Cal and we wish him nothing but the best. Thank you, coach. Um, and um, how important uh, would you say is the uh, partnership with Cadell um, to the continuation of the Pac-12 season? Uh, extremely important. It seems to be the, the thing that uh, allowed us uh, to, to start practicing. I, until we had the daily testing, we were not able to have a contact practice. And so even as early as this week, when we initiated the daily testing, we had to get a certain amount of data before they would, the public health officials would allow us to practice, uh, which as I, Jeff asked, uh, you know, came last night. So uh, I, I don't, without it, I, I don't, we wouldn't be sitting here talking about practice today from my understanding. Thank you. Last question. Uh, when can we expect depth charts? <laughs> oh, well, uh, not yet. <laughs> tell you what, when we get one put together, we'll, we'll make sure and ship it to all of you. <laughs> we just have a lot of work. Probably tomorrow, uh, right? Yeah, you, you can, you guys can start working on Kyle, yours. Kyle, we'll already sent me one. Yeah. Kyle already sent me one. I don't know what you guys are doing. We'll put one together oh. earlier. You could just sign off on it. Uh, yeah. So when, when we have one, you'll have it. Uh, we just, it'll be a little bit, we got, we got kind of bigger fish to fry right now and, and guys getting a lot of uh, reps and work and installation. There's just quite a bit to be done yet. As much as I would love to end on that question, we're going to let Trace test the final one here. That's I don't know if you can beat that Trace. I can't, but uh, just, <laughs> What, during this time where everybody's been, you know, as separated as we are, has anyone in particular stood out to you for, for a leadership role on the team uh, that maybe hadn't taken it before? Yep, that's a great question because it is, yeah, everybody kind of been pulled apart and uh, teams, fo football teams are not, built that, that way. I don't, human beings are not, as I think we all know, it's just, we're not made to be, you know, isolated. Um, but I've been really impressed with some of the guys we've been talking about. You know, Elijah Hicks, Marcel Dancy, Coin Dang uh, is a guy that jumps out to be, you know, Mike Safel, Jake. Um, a lot of those guys, you know, for what they're doing, you know, just even outside of our team, um, has been really impressive, Cameron Bynum. Um, and then there's guys just within the team, how they've kept each other going and motivated each other and been there for each other in some really difficult times. So uh, it's been uh, impressive to watch them. Okay, everybody good? All right, I think this group will see you next next Tuesday. So thanks for your time. Yeah, of course.